I always want to encourage everybody to try to make an actionable trading list on both sides of the market. Again, even though right now things are looking like they're going to roll over, it doesn't work. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessOfTrader.com Weekend Update Show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. I'm kind of literally in between soccer games and um, uh, basketball games. Uh, this is literally the only time for the whole weekend that I have like 15, 20 minutes to kind of record the video, kind of share my thoughts and move on to the next event. And right now, usually I, get, I usually get the weekend video done uh, either, you know, uh, Friday night, Saturday morning, or like early Sunday morning, it's 3.40 Sunday, and I still have another um, one basketball game left in the day. So let's talk about the tape. Uh, the scoreboard is not going to uh, paint a picture of what's going on. Volatility is still uh, definitely there. And, and the most important part of the volatility, um, the scoreboard kind of doesn't matter. If, if you look at what the NASDAQ uh, did this week. Uh, they literally eked out. I'm talking about a very eked out small game throughout the week. And if you notice why, we've had a really, really aggressive move uh, move down. We've had a dead cat bounce now for the last couple of days here. And we've gotten rejected off the 20 day moving average. I'll, I'll talk about, I'll kind of show you uh, the significance of that uh, in a second. But keep all this in mind, okay? If, if you're seeing um, a lot of names kind of stuck in channels are kind of drifting lower and trying to get their head above water and they're getting shoved back down. There's a reason for that. All this volatility is taking place below the 50 day moving average. And that's very, very important um, to kind of understand which way the wind is blowing, especially going into the new week. Um, the one thing that we, we have to consider is when you're doing the most basic technical analysis, you have to understand that bullishness right the bullish overall directional bias takes place when we're above supply and that supply now turns into the 50-day moving average and now we're two weeks below it's nestling in feeling comfortable below the 50 days so all this volatility is happening while the stocks are still trying to get up in air and the bull and the bears keep on bringing them back down because they keep on getting uh, rejected into supply and as many names that did very, very well and continue doing very, very well, despite where the overall indexes are, you know, names like Netflix, right? Thriving above, way above supply, had a great, great uh, run. Uh, a name like AFRM has been a, a rock star, right? An absolute rock star. Uh, a name like UPST is doing incredibly well. Uh, even a name like NET, that was a really big pivot yet uh, on Friday, uh, off that 137 level, it's gotten rejected several times. So, so the cloud names, uh, Netflix, the, there's definitely strength in this market. And, and if you don't pay t attention to macro technical analysis, you say, well, what, what's wrong? There's nothing wrong. Until you start looking at the broader names. And a lot of names are going to mirror uh, where the QQQs are. And that's kind of where my focus is. That's kind of the majority of names that I trade. So you'll notice after we lost the 50 day moving average, we kind of went down for like two weeks in a row, found this little short inter interchangeable, I guess, uh, way of looking at the market for a little bit of dead cat bounce. And if you look at the last time we failed twice off this rising 20 day moving average was right around here uh, on September the 23rds, which we tried to have the same kind of scenario, right? This dead cat bounce, into supply and what happened was next we had back-to-back -back days of rejecting off the 20-day moving average started the next cycle down that we eventually took out the previous lows and had a really really aggressive move down again the, the first kind of the most simplistic way of looking at a technical analysis is kind of back testing with a short interval of what happened last time we we met that scenario and you can see what happened last time right right we got rejected and went lower and we've had now a good dead cat bounce for the last three days in a row. We traded back into the 20 day supply. 
uh, two days in a row, putting the lower highs off the 20-day supply, just like we did on September the 23rd and the 24th. And the question is, what happens next? Well, again, if you're like me and you're a very visual person and you understand the most basic cases of technical analysis, above supply bullish, below supply bearish, well, again, this is a high probability. Okay, will it happen? We don't know to be determined, but there's, this is a high probability scenario that we saw right over here. Two days in a row had this nasty decline, two days in a row had a nasty decline. And if you look at most names that are not Netflix, that are not UPST, that are not Letter U, that is not uh, NET, you're gonna run into a lot of names that are kind of mirroring what's going on on the NASDAQ 100. Apple's chart looks exactly like a mirror image of the NASDAQ 100. You look at Amazon, right? You look at a name uh, like Amazon, did exactly the same thing. Rejected on the 20-day moving average and rolled over. Rejected the 20-day moving average to be determined. Look at Facebook, it never even rallied, right? It never even got to the 20-day moving average, got rejected off the 10-day moving average. Uh, look at Square, had a really good potential going into Friday. Uh, to reclaim the 20-day moving average, especially with the strength of Bitcoin, right? Now it's kind of a sort of, kind of, sort of, uh, like a Bitcoin plane. This was really sold off very, very aggressively, which is obviously setting up, uh, you know, shorter prices. Look at a bunch of semiconductor names, you know, like a, a M MCHP, right? Look at NVIDIA, okay? These are all names that kind of got rejected off the 20-day moving average. So it really is setting up the probability cycle uh, going into this week of what happens next. Now, again, you can make the counter argument, and this is why I always want to encourage everybody to try to make an actionable trading list on both sides of the market. Again, even though right now things are looking like they're going to roll over, it doesn't mean we will. We can, you know, future, by the time you guys get this video, uh, right now it's only a quarter to four. Futures, overnight futures will be open at six o'clock. You know, the NASDAQ 100 could be up 200 points. We don't know. But for, so for that's the case, we have to kind of plan out both sides of the market. So for every bad looking chart that looks like it's about to roll over, there are some good looking charts. Microsoft did a great, great job in reclaiming the 50 day moving average despite uh, the QQQs way below it. Uh, a name, for example, like Google, right? Looks very, very strong as well. Again, doing kind of the same thing that Microsoft is doing. It's kind of building a nice little base uh, above the 50-day moving average. So for all the names that look like they're about to roll over, there's still a handful of names that look like they're building a nice little base above their own supply zone. Now the question is, what happens next? And this is the part of the show where we turn around and say, we don't have to guess, right? Uh, there's definitely opportunity. Uh, if you did your homework over the weekend, there's definitely opportunity to the short side. Uh, there's definitely opportunity to the long side. And now the question is, what happens next? And about two hours from now, we'll get a, a early um, early look at where the futures are. We'll see exactly how strong they are, and we'll see how they progress through the overnight session to put themselves in a position that you have a little bit more clarity uh, at the open. Does the open dictate the whole day's events? Of course not. We, we see that uh, all the time. We see gap and craps. We see gap and goes. We see uh, dump and run, you know, all these different scenarios, but at least we are prepared. So for every uh, for every clear name like Microsoft and Google that are building and clear rollover possibilities like a Square, an Apple, a NVIDIA, a microchip, and a long line of names, there's still a lot of names that we could take advantage that are not um, usually trading with the overall indexes. So for example, look at a name like four, okay? I don't know what this four is, but look at the look at the chart in this four. Really aggressive engulfing candle that took down literally about a week and a half worth of buying, and now it closed below the Bollinger Band. Again, I'm not really familiar with the name. I don't know anything what they do, but this thing looks like it wants to. It, first of all, it closed below this whole range here. So this thing confirms Friday's channel. It looks like there's a lot of potential back to the downside. Um, a name, for example, like DraftKings, right? As much as every state looks like. You know, they're legalizing and gambling and all that stuff. You know, they just couldn't take advantage of, you know, the start of the football season, the start of, um, you know, the start of the major league playoffs. You have uh, college basketball starting. You have the NBA starting. So they're kind of, you know, they're kind of uh, putting, in, you know, they're putting in the wrong look uh, going into these new seasons. So look at the bottom of the range here. The only reason why it stopped 
uh, is this linear regression line. So this thing has potential uh, to go lower. But at the same time, again, there's a lot of names that are not correlated uh, with uh, potential uh, NASDAQ 100 moves. And look at a name, for example, like, um, like a Roku, right? It's not on the NASDAQ 100, but, but look at what it's kind of doing. It's not the greatest chart in the world, but you can see here, at least it didn't sell off with the market for the last couple of days. And now it's kind of a building a base above the 20 day moving average. And you can see the tight little channel. Of course, this is not an in breakout mode, but if you start looking at the options market and you start seeing, uh, especially last week, they were coming for the 330s, the 335 all short term expiration. At least you can find the sneaky channel here to kind of get going on a name that never sold off towards the latter part of the week that a lot of names started rolling over uh, and showing weakness rejected uh, off the 20 day moving average. The one enigma that, that is kind of sitting in there and, you know, I. I really don't have a strong opinion on Tesla. Uh, Tesla gave a couple of really, really strong moves uh, this past week. But, you know, I, I can't possibly be the only one thinking, well, they had the catalyst. They had some good uh, delivery numbers. They had a good shareholders meeting. They talked a lot, bunch of stuff. A lot of jargon was loose. But, again, the stock just couldn't put the appreciation yet. So now for Tesla going into this week, I'm literally watching both sides of the channel here. Uh, again, like I can see here, twice it held the 10 day moving average and twice it's, you know, it's twice it got rejected off the linear regression line. Something has to give you, right? Right now it's trading basically in a $12 range and the longer it kind of sits in that $12 range, uh, well, something, either the upside channel is going to confirm we're going to take out supply off the linear regression line, off the uh, Bollinger Band, or it's going to lose the 10-day moving average. And if you watch the video for a very long time, you kind of follow this channel, uh, you know how strong I feel about the five-day moving average being uh, the shortest term sentiment and the 10 day moving average being kind of the birth of the trade. So if Tesla loses the, the 10 day moving average, well, you could see where its next potential move. No technical damage is really going to um, be on the name until it loses this rising 20. So for now, we're just looking for a potential trade back to either to the upside or to the downside. And if it does close below the downside, then obviously you're talking about you know 35, 40 points to the downside. However, if it starts finally, uh, you know, finally digesting the gains and, and, and closing above uh, this Bollinger Band, then you can see here uh, where your measure potential is, right? Om almost to all time high. So we're kind of set up uh, going into this week. I'm definitely, definitely open minded. I I'd like to see Monday. You know, I don't want to be too aggressive on Monday. I'd like to see. Uh, in the first half hour, number one, how the futures open. Number two, how the stocks react to the first futures dip. I'd also like to see how the stocks react if we open lower uh, for a per first potential uh, market rally. And then slowly but surely, we're going to start accumulating data and making our technical view uh, kind of whole on the next uh, potential confirmation. So guys, have a great night. I have one more basketball game tonight. Uh, guys, I hope everybody's doing well. Hope everybody's having a great, uh, great life, right? Not even a great weekend, just a great life. Uh, smile, be happy. Again, we don't get a mulligan. Uh, we only have one life to live. Guys, have a great night, everybody. God's help. I'll see you all tomorrow. Take care.